How's it going everyone? It's Sam. I recently went on Altcoin Daily's channel and I was able to talk to them about leverage trading. Now I want to play this video for you. Of course you should go check out their channel as well. I'm sure that you already subscribed to Altcoin Daily. And then if you want to sign up for Margex, there's a link to it underneath the video. But let's get into it. Is it possible, and be real with me, yeah. to make $100 a day trading cryptocurrency? Yes. Today I interview crypto trader, my financial friend. I want to learn how to trade. As I continue my journey, what's a simple method to make $100 a day trading cryptocurrency as a beginner to learn how to trade crypto and win? Is this even possible? We start by going over the basics. You put a stop loss right above this line so that way. What is a stop loss? How to make the most money with the least risk. Something that's a little bit less risky that I love doing. And even what are the risks? But this is dangerous. Most people will lose money. Be sure to follow along on exchange partner Margex. This is actually something that's really cool about Margex. Register with code altcoin and claim up to $10,000 in bonuses. Link down below. But this just provides you even more safety than a lot of other ways of trading. Click the like button to support me. And let's start my financial friend with your background. Sure, yeah, so um, I was very interested in finance right out of college because I was studying to be uh, an, an anesthesiologist. I got done with all my classes. I uh, actually had like a 3.97 and then decided I didn't want to do it anymore because I didn't want to go back to school uh, for seven or 10 more years. So I got really into finance because I wasn't going to be making two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars $300,000 a year coming out of college. Dove into early retirement, um, started investing heavily during the pandemic, funneling almost everything I could to paying off debts and then over to investments and then got really interested in crypto around 2020. Can anybody trade or how did you learn how to trade? Yeah, so I mean, everyone can trade. A lot of people lose money trading. I think it's because naturally people get greedy. Like it's it's difficult not to get greedy because you're going to make more money, just like people investing in general in crypto. Like you put money in, and then you make money, and then you put more money in, and then you make more money, and it keeps on going great. Then at the very peak, you're probably putting the most money into the market your first cycle, and then the market dumps. And that can happen even quicker um, with leverage trading because you can have little jumps and uh, valleys, and you can get wiped out. So it's very hard to fight your own psychology, but I think you know if if you don't get too greedy, just like in the crypto market in general, you can come out a winner in leverage trading. But this is da dangerous. Most people will lose money. So I think most people will because most people just, like I said, will get greedy. But the people that do it well, and you don't have to start with a lot. Like I, I have a small, small portion of my portfolio in it. It helps me work on TA. It helps me not get greedy in general, like on the rest of my portfolio. And just in general, like it takes a little while, first of all, to even know what crypto is, right? And to learn crypto, it takes even more time to learn how to use leverage correctly, um, how it's used, you know, people use it to hedge their main portfolio. So if, you know, you own 10 Bitcoin, maybe you want like a, you're, you have some uncertainty over some event. Maybe you want to go short the market with a very small amount just to hedge in case the market goes down, then you can profit from that. Or maybe you want access to even better returns with part of your portfolio. So there, there are different things to learn that take some time. But generally, I think a lot of people uh, could do well if they just stick to it for a little while. Well, this series is all part of me and my journey in learning how to trade long short the market. So if you would, like, where do I even begin? Where would I start? First of all, you need to understand what leverage is, which quite simply, it's just getting access to more capital than you have. So if you have $100 and you use 5x leverage, you can get access to $500, right, for example. And it allows you to lever up so that that doesn't come risk-free. You can't lose more than that $100, for example, on this trade that we're talking about. But it's not free money, right? So the thought process is if Bitcoin goes up, let's say 20% and you're on a 5X leverage, well, you make 100% return. But then if it goes down 20%, then you lose that $100. So it doesn't have to go to zero, just like like if you actually held the Bitcoin, it would have to go down to zero for you to have $0 worth of Bitcoin. So there's extra risk. Um, so first off, you just need to know what that is. Second of all, you should know this should not be your entire portfolio because even if you make uh, three, four good trades, like eventually you, 
you're going to have a trade that goes the wrong way. And if you don't have stop losses, even if you have stop losses, sometimes you can risk uh, a good amount of the amount that you're trading or you can lose that amount. Um, it's kind of like a car. I think of it like a car where cars can be super useful. It, it might kind of suck if you didn't have a car because it helps you get to where you want to go faster. But just like a car, like you need training to be able to drive a car. Um, not everyone's great at driving either. And the difference is here, you just lose your money if you make one mistake. Um, and in a car, maybe you get a ticket or something like that. Um, or, you know, you can get it fixed at the shop. So you have to be careful. You have to understand what you're doing. Start with like a small, small amount, maybe a hundred dollars. Right. And then you have to, you also have to know what crypto is, which a lot of people, you know, maybe have my a, audience t- does. We do. Okay, cool. Then you have to find an exchange, right? You need to figure out some exchange that you like. I personally like Margex. Um, a couple things to know. There's no KYC. You don't need a VPN, which is um, interesting for a couple different reasons. Some people don't want everyone to know how much crypto they have, and they don't want you know they don't want exchanges to know how much crypto they have in an exchange even. So they don't ask for your personal information. You give them an email, a password, check their terms and conditions. You can sign up for an account. Um, they have been around through the last bear market. It's got a simple layout. A lot of exchanges copy and paste everything. Like there's like a specific format. This isn't a copy and paste. And um, there's only like five tabs across the top. So you don't have 40 different uh, drop down menus that have different options. It keeps things simple. And they're doing an airdrop right now, which is pretty cool. They're giving away up to $5,000 of Caspa. But honestly, you can use other exchanges too, but I, I just like this one. Um, and then you actually have to have a strategy which, you know, we can talk about. That's the toughest want. part. That's what yeah. I want. Uh, just the, the basic level, let's start there, uh, yep. strategy to trade. If you would, let's flip the charts, show me Margex, and show me, like, where do I begin? So this is what the uh, layout looks like, right? You have trade, copy, trading, convert, so you can sweep some uh, cryptos into other cryptos, your wallet and referral. So really simple. This is your chart powered by trading view, which is nice. Trading terminal here, positions down here, order book. I think what a lot of people try to do right away, uh, they're like, okay, well, CPI is coming out today. I'm going to try to trade that. CPI comes in well, it's going to push up the price of Bitcoin. I think that's a mistake because you know, a lot of times when we get big news, the market actually shifts the opposite way that you'd expect. Like the CPI came in at expectations or a little bit lower. So you think, okay, well, that's good. That means the economy is good. And we actually like fell down and then we went back up. Um, and, uh, a lot of people, I think, pl- try to play that kind of news, right? Um, however, I think like a really easy way to set up an account and to like, just start thinking or start taking advantage of news is like, you set up your account, fund it, you would go into the wallet, hit deposit, and then you can fund it, uh, through various cryptos. And then literally if, if you don't want to trade, if you're just learning right away, you can have the account set up. And then if there's some big piece of news that happens, that's not expected, right? Let's say Elon says, I just bought a hundred million dollars worth of Bitcoin or Tesla starts buying or something, something that's not scheduled. And you see that news, like you have the notifications on, okay, you go put a long in, like not something that's expected where everyone's watching it. So there's a ton of volatility up and down. You see good news or bad news right away. You come in here, you're trading Bitcoin on this chart. So you can shift it to Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana. I personally like to trade Bitcoin because I think it's just more liquid. It's less volatile. Uh, it's more distributed in general. So, you know, there's not some whale that holds 80% of the supply or something like that. And then you pick your collateral. So this is actually something that's really cool about Margex. You can use all different forms of collateral. A lot of people just use USDT or maybe Bitcoin on other exchanges. But here we'll actually get in the advanced section uh, or in the uh, advanced strategy, why this is so useful. But like I have Solana selected. So I have Solana as my underlying collateral for a Bitcoin trade. Uh, You can use a limit order, market order, stop market. Uh, We'll just go down here. Let's say again, you see Elon Musk say, I just bought a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin. You don't want to get like crazy risky. You put on a 5X, you you pick out how large you want the order to be. So on 5X leverage, uh, if it's 5,000 USDT, that means I'm putting up $1,000 worth of collateral, um, 5,000 USD, and then put your limit price. So if I wanted to buy it like right now, I'd probably just do a market order. If I want to catch it just on a little wick down, which I probably wouldn't if I was trying to do something right off 
uh, the news, you could just put in the limit order, then hit buy long and then open your position. So that's one strategy, just kind of walking you through how this is set up. Another strategy might be um, you just play resistance and support. And this is what a lot of people do over time. Like this one is probably the easiest thing to come back to time. And again, you don't have to wait for some big piece of news. You can just play this like every day. You can go to different time frames. But let's just look at like the big picture here and you can ignore these lines. These are just different positions set up um, over time. But obviously we've hit this like this level of resistance several times and it's not perfect, but you can see like we get rejected right before it, we get rejected right before it, we get rejected right after it, right before it. And, you know, in theory, if we moved back up, a lot of people might think that we would get rejected again, especially like if we're at a key level, 70,000, uh, we're hitting this line, maybe there's some resistance there. So maybe you want to short the market. Super simple, do the same thing, just short. So you're betting that the market's going to go down. And then maybe you want to put a stop loss. Maybe we break right through it and we go to Valhalla and we're super happy and Bitcoin's at 100,000. You put a stop loss right above this line. So that way- What is a stop loss? Yeah. So it just uh, essentially is like um, an order to the exchange to close your position at a certain price. So on the, I think it's a little bit easier from the long side to understand it. Let's say I went long um, on a position at 57,850. I was like, oh, if it breaks, you know, 57,000, it invalidates whatever, you know, whatever I'm seeing on the chart. Like we go below a line of support. I can put in a stop loss. I can just add it here. And it essentially means that at, let's say 56,950, if we go below that, it will close my position. So I don't risk the entire position every time I make a trade. I could be down 1% or 5% or something, or maybe I'm already in the profit by a ton. Maybe I'm already up 50% and I just want to lock in that profit of maybe 40%. You can set the stop loss. You can also set a uh, take profit as well. So if I get 100% gain, I'm just getting out of the trade completely or partially, you can do that too. Uh, those are just some things that a lot of traders use over time. It allows you to control your position a little bit better. So. That is another thing that you can do. So you can play the support and resistance, whether you know, you're trying to short the market or like here, this was a really, I thought kind of obvious one. All this fear was in the market. We had gone from 70,000 all the way to 48,000, 48,900 really fast. Uh, a lot of liquidations happening, but we had so much support and uh, resistance around this level. And we had more in this level. So like, support resistance, right? We got rejected here at 48,000, which was like a key level from the previous market. There are several points like right around 48,000 where we got rejected. So we're falling down, right? We're falling down really fast. I figured we'd have um, some support here. We'd actually bounce off this level, this key level. A lot of people thinking this was a pretty good price to buy in. And that's almost essentially exactly what happened. We were within a couple hundred dollars of where we got rejected here. We bounced off this level. I put the position in at 49,500 and then we just spiked right back up. Now, you know, if you get too aggressive, you could say, well, we bounced off 53,500 before we're going to do it again. And then you put in like a super aggressive long position, hundred X long. So if we go down 1% then you lose your position and then, you know, again, trying to fight that, uh, trying to fight that for that psychology of be, being too greedy, um, you could have gotten liquidated there. But generally, uh, you know, if this isn't 100% all the time, you're not going to make money on every trade. So maybe you do get liquidated. I know some people that will like open another position and another position until they hit the bottom. So that that's another strategy. Um, so support and resistance makes yeah. total sense to me as, as indicators to use uh, or visuals to use. What's one more indicator that you think really works is really effective? Yeah, so uh, there's there's obviously just something really easy, which is the fear and greed index, right? If we've fallen down for a long time, the market gets really fearful and you can see it. You can see it in YouTube views. Like there's so many different ways to measure it, but like when people generally get very disheartened, when they're worried about the market, when they're considering just selling, you know, like internally, that might be a good time to buy. One thing that I like to do if I'm leveraging, uh, if I'm using leverage in those kinds of markets, obviously you can just dollar cost average. That's great for the long term. 
Something that's a little bit less risky that I love doing is let's say we've fallen down significantly. So like from here, 70,000 down to 50,000 or 49,000, we're down 30%. We've already taken a big drop. We've seen uh, support a couple times. Maybe you want to do something that I like doing, which is a low leverage long. So instead of like a lot of people will do 20x, 10x, especially if we're looking at like a short time frame, maybe Bitcoin only moves a couple hundred dollars. If you're looking more macro, maybe you want to put in a 5x leverage. So just breaking down the numbers on that, let's say we're at 50,000 and you go on 5x leverage, Bitcoin would have to fall to about $40,000 for you to get liquidated. Now that provides you a lot of uh, a lot of room if we keep on falling down. So even if we don't catch at 49,000 and we go through like all this previous uh, you know, support resistance, no one wants to buy, maybe we bounce off like 40,500 or something, and then we keep moving up. So it gives you a lot more, a lot less risk. Um, and you can hold it for a long time. Like I've done this, some of these from when Black when BlackRock was uh, approving the ETF, I've had some positions open for that long, where it was just like 3X or 5X on Solana, on Bitcoin, and it really lowers your risk of liquidation. And you can just keep it open for a long time and ride it up, ride it down. Um, and again, I, I like doing this when there's fear in the market because generally that means we've already taken quite a drop. And then that provides you even more padding and safety. Obviously, if we're going into another bear market and Bitcoin goes down to 20,000, like leverage trading is risky if you're going long. That's also a way to make money if you're shorting. But like in some scenarios, there's just not much you can do. If the market's going to go down 80%, you're probably going to get wrecked as a long trader. But this just provides you even more safety than a lot of other ways of trading. Is there an indicator on here though, like in the indicator tab that you personally use? Is it like volume or moving averages or... I just want to know how you do it. Yeah, I mean, I keep it really simple. Most of it is support and resistance. 90% of what I do is support and resistance. Probably another 10% is, like I said, just low leverage long-term trading. And then, you know, if I can hear news or something, great. But yeah, uh, I, keep it, I keep it really simple with indicators. Is it possible, and be real with me, yeah. to make $100 a day trading cryptocurrency? Yes. I mean, a lot of it just comes down to like, how big is your, how big is your portfolio, right? I'm not going to sit here and say you can make 1% a day, every single day. Like there, there's no guru that's always right. There's no guru that's going to uh, give you trading signals that will always be correct. Keep in mind, all that's delayed too. And this is a quick moving market. So you can do it. I mean, when you come again, when it comes back down to it, like how big is your portfolio? If you have $10,000 in your uh, lever trading portfolio, you're not going to make a hundred dollars a day. At least maybe, maybe you will for a while and then you'll start losing. Uh, just if you're going for 30% gain every single month, you're not going to hit it. Now, maybe it averages out to that because maybe, you know, you get in at a good time or we just move up. Like this is the time to be leverage trading is in a bull market. Um, you can take advantage of the chop a little bit, but then when we do have an inevitable 10, 20, $30,000 move on Bitcoin, like you can make 10,000% profit or 5,000% profit, a thousand. And that could like technically get you a hundred dollars a day if you average it out. But I wouldn't be coming in here saying I need to hit a certain number. I'd come into it just like normal investing. Like how do I get the best risk to return ratio and not get greedy trying to get some arbitrary number? That makes sense. Flip the camera back on us, if you would. I, I, I really appreciate you taking the time. I guess just in summation, we're going to do an advanced guide to this is beginner level basics, which is exactly what I wanted, but just like final thoughts for the trading community. Yeah. So start with a low amount. Like don't come in here with 50% of your portfolio thinking I'm just going to go 100x leverage when I see CPI come in well uh, or come in at a good number. Like start slow understand what this is because you'll make mistakes. The difference is if you make mistakes buying Bitcoin, maybe you buy at the wrong price. Hopefully you don't send it to the wrong address or something like that, but you buy at the wrong price and you're still holding a great asset for the long term. Here, if you make a mistake and you try to get too aggressive, you can lose your hard earned cash or your hard earned crypto. So start slow, scale up, try to learn a lot. And yeah, I would, I would approach it in that way, not get too greedy.
and why tell me why this is a mistake or why this is bad thinking or maybe this is good thinking if i think bitcoin today is 59 something thousand if i think yes maybe it goes to 45 maybe it goes to 40 but in the next 12 18 months i think it's going past all time highs up to potentially 100k why not enter along ride out any dips or like why not do such a long term time horizon damn i'm making this long for the next 12 months is that good or bad thinking yeah i mean you can definitely do that that's kind of what i was talking about with going lower leverage obviously if you're at like 50x just the general volatility um you would need bitcoin to go down $1000 for you to get liquidated so that wouldn't make sense lower leverage it might make sense. Like I plan on doing that for the whole bull run. There are influencers that you probably know, uh, YouTubers that have positions open from the bear market and they keep them going. Um, I think that's definitely possible. Keep in mind, there are some fees too. Like just keeping the position open about every 24 hours, there's a small funding fee. It, mm. it depends on um, how leveraged you are, but I don't think it's enough to off, like to make it not worth it. It's just something that adds up. So if we went sideways for a year, you lose some fees to funding. Um, so that's something to consider. There's always some cost in that way, but it's pretty negligible when Bitcoin moves at all, like if it moves up. So I definitely plan on keeping some positions open the entire bull run. My financial friend, you, you're dropping videos, crypto videos every single day. Links for your channel are down below. Thank you, man. Yeah, thanks for having me on.